Hi, this is your host of Bharatiya and today we have with us Pratik Wadhir, Senior Vice President of Product Development at Intuit. Pratik, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here, Swapnil. Thank you for inviting me. And today, the primary focus is going to be on Argo Projects graduation and of course to understand the, the roadmap at the end of 2022. So I would also like to you know hear your thoughts on where the project is heading and all those things. But before we go deeper into that, tell us a bit about what is Argo project all about? Uh, we graduated Argo. Argo has now joined uh, the highest level of maturity in the CNCF. Uh, it uh, joins products or projects like Kubernetes, Prometheus, uh, Envoy, and uh, and as founders and you know one of the largest maintainers of the Argo project, uh, we're sort of proud and honored by this huge milestone. Right. So. You know, you asked what Argo is. You know, Argo is actually a collection uh, of projects. Uh, you know, Argo workflows, Argo CD, Argo events, uh, Argo rollouts. But uh, primarily, uh, it was really born to enable scale with, you know, developing and running applications in the public cloud. Uh, and uh, we created the project with a very specific focus on, uh, on creating a GitOps-driven Kubernetes native workflow engine to run complex workflows for CI, CD, and machine learning workflows. And, uh, you know, as our journey at Intuit, uh, you know, went on in our cloud adoption and move, move to a container-based ecosystem, uh, you know, we continue to uh, enhance and build uh, projects into Argo. If you just look at not only CNC of landscape, but cloud native in general, talk a bit about some of the pain point that are there, of course, in the, when we talk about CICD, because when we look at the early days of CICD, it was more or less like patching a lot of things together, then a lot of projects came out, and now there's also a CDN foundation as well there. So talk a bit about the evolution that you have seen in the market, which is also with the, you can say maturity of these projects, at the same time maturity of the market, maturity of the, the Kubernetes ecosystem as well. What have you seen? Yeah, that's a, actually a good question because, uh, you know, so as you, uh, you may not know, but as you, uh, Argo was born out of a, a company that I co-founded. Uh, it was called Aplatics uh, that was then acquired by Intuit. And uh, when we when we founded Aplatics, what we were observing was uh, essentially a move to cloud uh, by large enterprises. Uh, so that movement had started. This was around 2015. At the time, there were a number of competing platforms, uh, you know, and Kubernetes was kind of in its infancy, but it was uh, sort of growing to be the mainstream, you know, cloud native platform. And uh, as we were observing this, we, we saw a need uh, for the complex you know, workflows uh, in the cloud environment, right? When you look at the cloud environment, CI, CD, you know, in the traditional environment is just about, you know, packaging software, building software and, and deploying it. When you start thinking about cloud native environments or even just moving to cloud, building, operating in the cloud, deploying in the cloud is a whole new uh, way of doing things. And so that's what we were observing. And we felt that there was going to be a need to essentially revamp uh, you know, either the CI, CD, you know, architecture of the current existing tool sets or to build something that was very native to containers and Kubernetes. And that's kind of where we started. We focused on building a, a very cloud native Kubernetes or container native, you know, CI, CD uh, project. And Intuit is, you know, a, of course, a consumer of the project itself. You folks are, you know, creators and consumer, but the project is being used widely across industries as well. Can you also talk about um, any specific use cases where the project is being used or you feel that, hey, like many other cloud native projects, <laughs> just the way Linux kernel or Kubernetes, you know, we did not even think about it could be used there and folks are using it. Yeah, so, you know, let's start with Intuit's journey because, uh, you know, when Intuit acquired uh, Applatix, Intuit was on its own journey to the cloud. Uh, you know, they had made a determination to move all of uh, the platforms and capabilities and products, uh, products like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, uh, you know, onto, onto cloud. And, 
one of the thoughts uh, that was really driving this was really that as they were making the switch, the idea was really how do you make a leap forward and essentially get to where you know the market or you know the products of the future were going to be built. So what we started doing at Intuit was really building a modern uh, SaaS development environment. Today, all of Intuit's products run on this modern SaaS development environment, which is a Kubernetes environment. And as we started doing this work, we quickly realized the limitations of the existing tools, which are really built for on-prem uh, you know, environments. And uh, you know, so we quickly revamped Argo. We essentially started with Argo workflows, uh, and then we saw a quick need to have an efficient deployment mechanism where, where Argo CD was born. And as then as the community started adopting it, you know, uh, BlackRock contributed Argo events, uh, which is something that was very natural in the process. You know, you have workflows, you have events, events trigger workflows, and then eventually you do deployments. And, and then as we started, you know, moving further down the chain, you know, where, you know, the migration of these products worked, we also clearly saw a need for things like, you know, A-B testing and, uh, you know, progressive rollouts, right? So as you do a deployment, uh, you don't really do a wholesale deployment. So we have thousands of microservices running over hundreds of clusters. In order for us to deploy, you know, something say like TurboTax, it would not be feasible to just say, we're gonna migrate, you know, hundreds of clusters and, and, and do it in one fell swoop, right? So the idea was really, you need some kind of a progressive delivery mechanism you know, which is watching out for signals and then would do a rollback if things do not work out or if things are working out, then it does a progressive deployment and continues over, right? So these are some of the challenges that you you encounter very quickly, especially in the cloud. Talk a bit about what does graduation mean for a project as mature? Actually, interestingly, in CNCF landscape, most of these projects are already being used in production when they enter these different uh, label stages. But what does graduation uh, mean for the project, for the community, for the whole ecosystem? Yeah, it's so it's interesting you say this because, you know, uh, Argo actually joined the CNCF as an incubating project in 2020. Uh, you know, and uh, today we have over 8,000 contributors, uh, over 190K, you know, contributions. Uh, and we have over 500 plus companies that are using Argo, uh, publicly uh, referenced companies. So from a community standpoint, you know, uh, Argo has probably achieved uh, everything that, you know, everything and more that I could have dreamed of, okay? So it's a very humbling experience to see the, the widespread adoption and the community uh, building around Argo. What does graduation mean? Graduation fundamentally means that the community now sees Argo as a valid project, uh, you know, standing, you know, head to head uh, with projects like Kubernetes or Prometheus or Envoy. And uh, and it has you know the weight of the CNCF behind it supporting it as a community project. Right? So I think the graduation, first of all, the criteria for graduation, things like security, compliance, governance, uh, it's a long road, right? And uh, to meet all of these criteria requires a lot of effort across the community. So for example, the security. Uh, posture of uh, Argo took a long time, uh, you know, and now we can safely say that it is a pretty secure, you know, uh, open source project uh, and it's widely deployed across enterprises. So, uh, so that's really the fundamental, you know, position of, of uh, graduation, really. Now, I also wanted to talk a bit about, because this is an important talk, I mean, I come from your open source background, where at one point people used to frown at commercialization, but the fact is without commercialization, open source will not succeed. So talk a bit about, of course, uh, Linux Foundation has played a very critical role in creating a kind of, you know, level playing, vendor neutral field where projects can come here and even your competitors can, you know, use those projects without worrying about you pulling the plugs or getting worried about, hey, you may change a license or something like that. But, but talk a bit about the, the importance of you know, company like Intuit, when they invest in this project, it actually ensures the sustainability, the health of these projects. Yeah, so so the, the best way to think about it is that, you know, of course, an open source project has 
you know, contributors, it has maintainers, you know, it has some form of governance driven by the community, uh, a roadmap that is also agreed upon by the community based on requests that's coming in. Um, but having the backing of a company like Intuit, for example, which has put all of its weight behind running all of the core flagship products on this platform, uh, but also providing, you know, technical and developers, you know, to actually maintain and run the, the project. So it's it's a it's um, it's essentially a testament and a validation that uh, you know open source uh, as a project or open source projects do require this sort of commitment, right? Because there are large security governance uh, scale issues that come by running a pro product like this, right, in an environment like Intuit. And if you have a company that is now standing behind it, then it actually validates the project, you know, just like Google did with Kubernetes, right? I mean, that was really the fundamental balance of um, having a company validate that this is a new platform, right? But secondly, you asked about commercialization, right? So this is something that we put a lot of thought behind. Um, as we were growing the community, it was very natural to have companies you know, development companies, tools companies, uh, companies developing, you know, cloud native developer ecosystems or products, uh, be interested in figuring out, you know, how to adopt Argo and then potentially commercialize it, right? So we approached this very, uh, you know, carefully because we wanted to make sure that the project always maintained an independent identity that was driven by the community. All of the work that we did was done transparently in the community. But we also wanted to make sure that, you know, we gave vendors a commercial path to, you know, monetizing. Uh, and, and there's a number of reasons we want to do that. First of all, what Intuit has achieved, not many companies can do that, right? The scale of Intuit allows us to actually deploy uh, developers and actually support the program. But there are a lot of companies that just want to use the open source project and make sure that, you know, it has a backing and a support or a partner that they can trust with. And I think that's where the commercialization comes in, where we have, you know, companies like Red Hat, for example, Codefresh, Acuity, you know, that are actually providing the community with, uh, you know, the support that is needed to run these products at scale and monetizing it. And I think it's a fine balance, but it's, uh, it's something that I truly support. And I feel like the community gets stronger when you have this. What are the things that are in the pipeline uh, for 2023? The, what are the things that are in your roadmap? What are the challenges, problems that you're looking at solving or the improvements that you want to make to the project? Yeah, as we start thinking about it, you know, first of all, there's just a matter of scale. And I talked to you about the different projects that we have, right? Um, we have workflows and uh, CD events and uh, rollouts. Interestingly enough, as the community has been, you know, picking this up, uh, we've started to see use cases that we had not anticipated before. Right? So for example, the, the ML community uh, has picked up Argo workflows because it's a very uh, you know, lightweight, but very extensible and scalable workflow engine. And it, it essentially brings the power of Kubernetes, the scale of Kubernetes very easily to deploying workflows like this. And I think that is going to be the next frontier because what we are seeing, for example, at Intuit, now that we're running it at scale and we have you know, a large number of users, we have over eight or 9,000 developers that use you know, the system on a daily basis. What is still missing you know, is um, things like, how do you make it easier for developers to start using this? There's still a challenge uh, you know, in, in terms of having developers quickly adopt this and use this. Right? And uh, the other thing that comes into it, you know, uh, you know, more recently, actually, I led a uh, a panel at uh, KubeCon to actually understand what were the biggest obstacles today in adopting cloud native technologies, and you know, security, consistency, and operational excellence, and just overall achieving development velocity, right? Uh, were the sort of key, three key themes that actually popped up. So when you start thinking about these, you know, especially around operational excellence, you know, and then increasing the development velocity, the next, you know, fundamental change will be to actually incorporate AI ops 
you know, as to make the platform smarter and to make, you know, the user experiences even simpler, right? And I think the key here is that you need to start using data to essentially drive, you know, the next phase of development here. So at Intuit, for example, we have really focused on observability, you know, because operational excellence starts with observability. Uh, and then once you start collecting the data, uh, the next phase of this is how do you make it intelligent? So how do you now start applying smarts, right? And more recently, we added an add-on to Argo CD, an observability add-on to Argo CD, which essentially allows you to do this, which takes all of the data that's coming in and then presents uh, core signals that you can now use to make decisions about whether you want to roll forward or backward or you know, very quickly identify anomalies that are happening in the system. Um, Intuit recently launched uh, an open source project called Numa Proj, which is you know, a collection of open source tools for real-time data analytics and AI ops. Right? And I believe that that is going to be the next phase and shift uh, of even Argo, where we start seeing Argo and now essentially allowing customers and users to incorporate smarts into the platform. Pratik, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, walk us through the journey of, you know, uh, Argo project, how Intuit is using it internally, and also the importance of uh, commercialization, all those vendors who are offering those support with the project, and also share the roadmap for the project. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Sopnil, and thank you for having me.